Hello, hello from Bryson City. Here again with another free art lesson. Um, today we are going to be doing um, uh, drawing with markers. And I've got a few things laid out for that. Um, but before I begin, I've got a quick, a quick service message, I guess you could say. Um, while we're all stuck together in this, I just wanted to remind everybody, if you can... Um, support your local artist. So um, I'm having coffee this morning with uh, Brian Davenport. No, Brian is not here, but I have one of Brian's mugs. So every time I look at this mug, I think, hey, I'm going to have coffee with Brian Davenport, which is pretty cool. That's one of the reasons why, you, um, why you'd want to support your local So that way, you know, you have that relationship, um, it's artwork, you know, not that, you know, yeah, you could go get a mug cheaper anywhere else. Of course you can. But it's the fact that you know who made that mug, you appreciate that person, and every time you see that, you think of them. So, that's my service announcement for today. <laughs> so anyway, markers, yes, I have some stuff laid out here, and we're going to get started here in just a second. <clears throat> All right. So first, here's my big bag of markers. Um, I bought this set a while ago, and I've really been enjoying it. They are um, tribacolor, or tibra color, sorry, um, tibra color, and I have I've just basically threw them all in here, and I've thrown them in this big, big bag from Jerry's Artorama. Um, and in case you were wondering, Jerry's Artorama is based in Raleigh, North Carolina. So um, I like to do my shopping as much as possible in North Carolina. But um, sometimes that's not possible. So anyway, here's the markers. We'll be using those today. also have, again, we've looked at this, the pins, the collections of pins and other markers. I use these at the same time when I draw with markers. So it's good to have them. So some examples sketchbook I started a while ago and here's some examples of what you can do with pins and markers there's some uh, I started drawing these amulets they're pretty interesting um, they're more like they start off as a doodle and then turn into something else all the stones here are uh, based off of real stones this is based off of uh, lapis there's my black snake um, Walker Camp Prong Overlip, which uh, if you ever go over to Gatlinburg on 441, this is uh, just down from Newfound Gap. So I caught a wonderful sunset that day and translated it. So again, all this is marker. The dark up here is um, Sharpie. Let's see. Let me skip ahead a couple here. This is one of my wife's favorite. This is the uh, Amulet of Water. So we have this Nautilus shell. Nicholas that are coming out. Again, all marker um, outlines around the important parts with um, with the sharpie, and the stone here is aquamarine. So this is the kind of things I mean you can you can really crank up uh, to a um, crank it up to another level and do cool stuff with markers and do layering and stuff like that. So a little landscape from the beach. So, some examples, but um, let me get my paper out here today. Do, do, do. And get set up. If you have any questions or need help finding, like if you want to get some materials or something like that, um, make sure uh, to post in the comments so I can... Uh, uh, I can provide you, like, information to those resources and stuff. Also, I almost forgot, and I need to do a shout-out for these folks, too. If you don't want to draw, if you just want to color, um, our friends down at Bryson City Outdoor have been posting um, coloring sheets drawn by Liz Nance um, and some of their other employees daily um on um um on their website so you can go this is one of liz's 
So you can go get a print off a color sheet and you can color this instead of drawing something and having to figure it out, you know. Um, and this is great practice. A lot of people think coloring, coloring is for kids. No, coloring is practice on how to blend and shade and do that kind of stuff. So don't ever let anybody tell you coloring is for kids. So, all right, so let me get my, get my camera in here, get it switched around. So I'm going to start off today. Let me get, uh, I have a double-ended Sharpie here. Again, again with the Sharpies. <coughs> Hello, folks at Sharpies. Send me some Sharpies. <laughs> um, so before I begin, I'm going to just draw real quickly. Um, I'm going to draw a little bit of a landscape, and we'll go from there. So, a little landscape. Uh, here's a tree. fill in the top of the tree like this. I want to do it very loosely with this Sharpie because I'm going to back and make it look a whole lot better. So just like that. And then off here in the distance, we'll draw our mountains. And another row that ties in like, like so. Right here. And in the background, I'm going to put in really light, just a couple clouds. And maybe one more up here. Okay, this is our basic drawing. So now I'm going to break out, break out the markers. I'm going to start off with this brown and start on the tree. I have Betsy here with me again this morning. She's going to be helping. I have that coloring page if you'd like to do that from Liz. Oh, okay. Yeah. She's going to color the coloring page from Bryson City Outdoor from Liz Nance. So we'll see what kind of magic she can come up with. So when I use markers, I like to come through and just do some quick lines one way. Um, so I can layer the whole idea with markers, I think, uh, that works really well is you can use them to do, create layers, do layering, stuff like that. So a little bit of brown down here, tie it all in some more over here. Okay. Switching gears to another brown. get this light gray because when you walk up to a tree out in the real world they're not really brown they're more of a gray color <coughs> so I'm going to come through So again, it's about the layering, layering of color. So I've got a yellow here. I'm going to start off with the yellow up here in the tree on the uh, outside edges. And you guys will see what that'll do. And again, I'm using uh, more realistic colors. You don't have to use realistic colors. 
Your tree could be purple or pink. It could have blue or um, um, really, you know, really bright red leaves. It could have, uh, you know, orange leaves. It doesn't have to be summer. It doesn't have to be spring. It can be whatever season you want it to be. So again, I'm just going with this yellow. So I'm putting yellow down here in the bottom. I'm putting yellow you know, around so it blends. I'm also going to put a little yellow over here. Just like that. Okay. Next from the big bag of markers, let's see what else I've got. Um, ooh, here's a dark blue. We'll wait till later on that. Here's one. I have this lavender. So we're going to come through with the mountains here. And I'm trying to use the very, very, very fine point so I can make a very fine line. I have this, this kind of um, turquoisey blue. interest of time I'm not going to fill in the entire background however <laughs> I will finish the picture and uh, post a picture of it in the comments so you can guys see how it completely turns out <coughs> right now I just want to get around this tree come over here Pretty simple, pretty simple but effective. I'm gonna leave this out because I'll need it later. Um, got a dark green, I'm gonna get three greens now. They're pretty closely related. There we go. This obviously is much darker. So I'm gonna start with the lighter one first. green here on the mountains all right going a little bit darker now for the mountains, I have changed direction. So before I was going this way, now I'm going this way to make more of a, like a cross stitch or woven kind of pattern with the markers. This will allow the color, the two colors to kind of work together. And then I'm going to take this one. I'm also going to go around the edges and use this color a little bit more on the edges. Uh-oh. <laughs> Some markers rolled off the table. There we go. And now for our dark green. We're going to put a little bit, of, actually we're going to come through a little bit of dark green here on the tree. Remember, moss grows on trees, too. 
<laughs> we'll come through with a little dark green here. Still going this way. All right. Now I want to do something a little different back here where the mountains are with this dark green. We're going to start here and um, we're going to say this part of the mountain because it looks like our light source is coming this way. So this part of the mountain is going to be in, in shadow. We'll extend that out a little bit over this way. And let's say there's over here in this bottom corner, there's also a holler right here. So we'll extend the shadow out that way as well. So, uh, same thing on this side. We want to appear. The mountain has depth. It is dimensional. So same thing again. Another holler right here. Maybe a little one right here too. There we go. Over here. Don't forget these mountains here. They all need the treatment. Just like that. Now, I have that turquoisey color from the sky again. I'm going to get it out, and we are going to go over these background mountains. Put a little bit up here, too. So the background mountains are now a blend of this turquoisey color and a lavender. Let's reach in the bag one more time. Uh, this time I'm going to pull out this sage green color. With the sage green color, we're going to come through for these background mountains. Just gently kind of fill in some of the <coughs> lighter spots. Give them a little bit of a green hue. If you guys have been outside recently, you'll notice our mountains are starting to become green. All the leaves are starting to come out on the trees. Everything's budding. Again, a very light touch with these markers. You don't want to push down very hard. So you just want to kind of lightly sketch with them. That's what creates the color variation. So now the background mountains here are three different colors. Lavender, turquoise, and this sage green. And it creates a lot of depth. Betsy's doing a similar kind of thing. She's carried the colors over. And now she's using this darker up here. Very nice. All right, I have my blue. Oh, and I also have um, a little bit of this light green from before. We're gonna fill in some of the tree with this. Let it blend with that yellow. Again, very, very light touch. I'm just, I'm not pushing down. I'm, I'm holding the marker like this and I'm sort of just kind of letting it brush across the paper. We'll come in with this medium green. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do some curves and some swirls. Kind of help build up the volume of the tree with this darker color.
swirls. You got this darker blue, like an, almost like an indigo. I'm going to get it out, and with it, I'm just going to lightly come through. There's some spots over here on this tree <coughs> that need to be darkened. So I'm going to use this as a shadow. This kind of dark blue, purpley shadow. Same thing on the underside of the tree here. Real light. You don't want to push down too hard with these. Just want to sort of let the ink kind of fill in the places where there's raw paper, where it's still kind of white. There we go. Create a little depth, the illusion of some depth on the tree. Let's see. Somewhere, this will work as well as... So I have two more blues here for a little bit of the sky blue. So I'm going to come through. This time I'm going to go this way. Ooh. that like again I'll do the rest of this later and I have for one more I have this kind of a gray blue I'm going to turn the paper this way because it'll make it easier for me to do this so I've gone this way and diagonal and now I'm going the opposite direction to blend all these colors together Again, very light with the touch, not pushing down very hard. Get all that filled in there. <coughs> all right. So you can keep going with this, with these markers and this, uh, this kind of cross hatching and building up lines and texture and stuff. Um, you can add other colors in there. For example, here's a little bit of red. Might be something with some red blossoms or blooms up in these mountains. There we go. Um, you can come back in with all sorts of different colors and stuff like that. Um, it just depends. Depends on whatever. I mean, you can... Yeah, you can grab other stuff out of here. You can uh, build up these layers. Here's a little like this seafoam kind of green color. You can build all this stuff up and it'll create um, a, lot, a good variety of color throughout your picture. Um, you can also, I forgot to mention this too, you can also do dots. Do a little pointillism. Dots are kind of nice. So you come through and you just make the dots. Matter of fact, we'll do a few more here. <laughs> That's the problem is you start working on this and it's, addict it's addictive and you're like, oh, I need to keep doing this. I don't want to stop. So, but you can do the dots. You can do the pointillism, fill it in. Um, 
so I look forward to seeing uh, what you guys create today with your markers. Uh, again, please post any suggestions for future lessons in the comments. Post your drawings in the comments. And um, we will see you tomorrow. And tomorrow we're going to be doing, if I remember what the list said, was collage. So you'll need some cutouts from magazines or papers and some glue. So y'all have a great day and see you tomorrow.